Good luck. Thank you. Hey, judges. Hey, everybody. Uh, hello there. My name is Dr. Shelley Prevost. I'm a mama of three kiddos, a psychologist, and CEO of Torch, where we are making the internet a wonderful place for kids to grow up. So why did we start Torch? We started Torch for my family. My oldest son started developing a video game addiction to a little game called Minecraft. You might have heard of it. It got so bad that he was getting up in the middle of the night and would play until he would have to get up to go to school. My husband and I did all that we knew to do, which was unplug the router and take it to bed with us every night. And we did that for a year, uh, which is ridiculous if you think about that concept. Fortunately for me, I worked with a bunch of techies and they all jumped in to help me. They said, we're gonna solve this problem for you. But what we all quickly realized is that the solutions on the market for protecting and managing and monitoring your children's technology are not made for non-technical people like me. They're very complex. So we set out to solve that problem. And like many of you all, I did not wake up in the morning thinking, how can I screw my kids up today? You know, we try to be good parents. We try to stay connected and available to them. It's just that technology has fundamentally changed everything for parenting. So this is what it looked like 60 years ago, even 30 years ago. We had one or two TVs in the house and we all congregated and kind of hung out there in the family room. Now this is what it looks like. The average home has seven devices. Uh, you all know this, we're connected all the time. And it, it, there's a double screening phenomenon that's happening in houses right now too. So what is Torch and how are we helping solve this problem? So at our core, we are a company that is building technology, we're building tools, and we're giving guidance and resources to parents to make parenting with technology easier. So our first feature is a Wi-Fi router right here, and it has several features that we're launching with. One, you get a pause button for the internet, for specific kids' profiles or for all of your children. So for things like dinner time, you want them all to come, come to the dinner table. We have a blocking feature, so if they're, they see content that you don't want them to see, you can take it off of their profile, and you can also add content to their profile that you would like them to be able to explore. We have a reporting section, so router level reporting, so no more going incognito. And there's also a bedtime feature, which is my favorite one. Your internet goes off when your kids go to bed. And last, we have the data feature that we're gonna be crowdsourcing data from the router. So here's the deal, we share our cars, we share our couches, we share our homes. Why are we not sharing our data? Especially for parents like me who need that information. So things like trending math apps for fifth graders. I need to know that. What are some commonly blocked websites? I'd like to know that. So what have we done so far? We have raised $2 million that got us really far down the path of manufacturing design and development, which culminated in a Kickstarter for us last fall. We raised $162,000. We were selected as a staff pick and recently featured in the projects we love. Uh, went to, we went to South by Southwest and won an award there in their privacy and security division. Since Kickstarter, we have generated $80,000 in pre-sales revenue, and we are launching in about 60 days with a, a shipped product, so that's exciting. Let's talk about business a little bit. Uh, I am our target market. This is a marketing play. We are getting our product to parents like me. We are educated, we're engaged, uh, we're not very tech savvy. We love technology, we know our kids need it, but we also are scared about what they might do and discover with technology, and we have the money to protect them. Here's our competitors. It's filling up, the space is filling up. You can see there's a lot of us out there. Uh, what I will tell you is that we are leading with customer empathy, not more technology. Technology is not the problem, accessing it is. And this is as much a marketing play as it is a technology play. Our business model, so our price point, $250 for a high-end, powerful router, $9.99 a month subscription will give you the parental features, categorical filtering, uh, which I call the porn button. I want a porn button that I can restrict porn from my kids' profiles. Um, we are also doing dedicated customer so support for the subscription. 
and of course, the crowdsource analytics. Uh, this is our badass team. This is a lot of badassery right here. This slide represents $750 million uh, in revenue these, of starting and scaling companies. So there's a lot of experience here. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is that we are raising a $1.2 million seed round with $200,000 left. And my intention today is to finish that. And we have a goal of getting to a million families in the next, by 2020. And if you share that goal, and judges, you share that goal, I would love to talk with you all. Thank you. I hate that bird. So you talked about who your target market is and that this is a marketing play, but you didn't really talk about how you're going to market and how you're going to reach those customers, and especially in that super crowded competitive yes. space. Yes. So we are direct to consumer right now. And we know that 42-year-old moms are on Facebook, and we are finding that to be true. So we're getting all of our revenue right now from Facebook. We have two uh, distribution partnerships with internet providers because we know moms like me and parents like me are still renting our routers from internet providers. Um, so we're working on both of those pilots. And we also, there's an interesting software play. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about that, but it's, there's potential for consumers to very easily, again, super simple, download uh, our firmware onto their pre-existing router, so making it even more, less of a barrier of entry for parents. So can you talk, can you talk about that a little bit? Which is, so why, why did you make the decision to actually have a hardware device with that as opposed yeah, to actually a software-only service? That's the number one question I get. Initially, the idea was that I don't really understand what a router does, but I know I need it. I know that there's uh, the, the portal, uh, the hub of the home is where all of my Wi-Fi is routed. So uh, that was a, a little bit lower barrier of entry for us to even get to moms like me. Uh, the software play, although uh, interesting and certainly less complex in some ways, is more complex in a marketing play for us. And so we made that early decision to go with the, the actual box to get the, the service to the parents. Question, uh, what, what is the cost of the actual router? Uh, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> it's $98 to make, uh, which is too high. We're getting that cost down. I don't like that cost. And you sell it for? We sell it for 250 You talked a little bit about yourself. Can you expand on the team and the team's backgrounds? Yeah, so we are being incubated uh, in Lamp Post Group which is a venture capital incubator in Chattanooga. Um, yeah, hey guys. And they uh, have successfully started and scaled multiple companies. Um, they're our advisors. We have a team of e-commerce kind of brainiacs who are getting in and helping us with our e-commerce strategy. Um, so the execution of what that team represents is pretty amazing. Uh, and I love them. They're the they're best people in the world. I guess just to follow up on that, though, what happens when you move out of incubation? How does the team get constructed going forward? Who stays with the incubator and who comes with you? And, they and all come with like? me. Right. <laughs> so the incubation, the kind of the rules of graduating, uh, you have to have a leader, you have to have revenue, you have to have uh, execution, uh, and, and really moving toward self-sufficiency. And so we're not there. We still, I heavily rely on advisors, especially my technical advisors, um, obviously. Um, so yeah, moving out of that, we have criteria to meet. And it usually will take a couple years. So. You've been sure for talks. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, that was Torch from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh man, thanks. You got something? What do you, what do you got? We got well, feedback from you? 